Hey everybody! Today we are going to learn the honeycomb method, which is one of several ways that we can place rhinestones on our projects. And the honeycomb method is somewhat simple, uh, but beautiful. It's an elegant way of doing it. So let's get to the fun part. Hello everybody, welcome. This is Jess from Fourth and Birch. Thanks for joining me today. We are going to talk about the honeycomb method for placing rhinestones. So in one of my other videos, you have learned about the scatter method, which is placing numerous stones, numerous size stones on various areas of a cup. So they fit together like puzzle pieces, but they're all scattered with no rhyme or reason. Today, we are going to learn the honeycomb. And as you can see, they're all in straight lines. They fit together the row before. And then they ultimately cause rows like this as well and they line up. I do not expect you to bling your little passport like this, but it's much easier to see in larger sizes like this and in small products. But typically what I use the honeycomb method for is something like this. A cup. This is a 14 ounce thick. And this would have been absolutely awful to try to do a tutorial on just because the stones are fairly clear. They're a crystal color with um, a crystal color with uh, the AB, the Aurora Borealis covering on them. So they are beautiful, especially in the sunlight. This just sparkles. But a little too difficult to actually do a tutorial and show you what the heck I'm doing. So. Stay tuned and we will talk about how I made this guy. All right, welcome everybody. Let's get started on our honeycomb. First off, these are my six millimeter stones. And like I had said before, I typically do not put these on tumblers. I think they're just a little too big, but you absolutely could. This is what they look like in a tray. I will link everything that I can in the description so you can see where I got everything and what everything is called. But so these stones uh, are acrylic or plastic and they have that coating on them that's the Aurora Borealis coating which makes them kind of that color change uh, where it catches the light. So I'm using these six millimeter stones just to make it easier to show you in a tutorial really how we how we do these and how we kind of butt them up to each other to make that honeycomb look. So due to that coating on them, that Aurora Borealis coating, I have taken these two stones out and I'm just going to toss them, throw them away. It's a little hard to see, but if you look at the very top of them, where the light shines off of them, uh, they got a little scratched. And I'll be honest with you, if you put these on a project, uh, like a tumbler or something like that, they probably will eventually get scratched anyway. That's just the, the nature of the game with acrylics. But when you put these on your tray or however you're going to spread them out for yourself, just take a good look and make sure that they all look uniform. There's not one that, um, that you don't want to use for whatever reason. And sometimes these things are somewhat mass produced and there might be something that's just a completely different color in there too. So just take out the ones that you don't want early on. This is something I bought on Amazon. You can get it at craft stores and a lot of different places. But basically this is the picker that you are going to be picking up your stones with. So in the middle there's a tweezers 
the clear and the pink stones, uh, that's just the handle. And then the yellow and the white cones on the end, one of those screws onto the handle, and that is what you are going to end up picking up your stones with. They usually have a couple extra in there just in case uh, the wax breaks. You can replace the tip. All right, this is the glue bottle that I'm using. It is found in the tie-dye section of Hobby Lobby, and I have poked a hole in the, the tip, so it's a fairly thin hole that the glue comes out. I bought a plastic cup at Walmart. This is, it's kind of a heavy-ish duty cup um, just to withstand the weight of the glue bottle. So when I'm done putting some glue, I will toss this back nose down into my cup so all the glue with gravity stays at the bottom of my bottle. This is what's in my bottle. It's Fusion Tack Adhesive. It's super tight. This is my favorite. There are numerous brands out there. I discuss them a little more in depth in some of my other videos, but this is the one uh, by far that I use the most. And for size of your stones, they come in so many different sizes. The the way the terminology, the SS12 versus the three millimeter, for instance, the SS is usually reserved for glass stones. And just the three millimeter or the number and then the millimeter, that's usually how the acrylic or the plastic stones are measured. And uh, this is just a really nice chart that I got from one of the companies that I purchased some stones from on Etsy. Uh, but this is something that you can Google the the um, the different names of the stones and what they actually mean. So as you see here, this is a six millimeter. If it were a glass stone, it would be called an SS30, but those would be the same size. Okay, so I have already placed my initial row and this is probably the most important row. No, it's not probably, it is. It's the most important row. You want it straight. You want all of the stones equally distant from each other. So typically touching is how I do. And I let these dry. You want a nice base that's not going to move around. And when I put these on, you can take something that's flat, either something like this or anything, and kind of tap them so they all are in a nice row. We are going to put our next row of stones in between each of these and you'll see they fit really well. They kind of just cuddle up in there next to the next row. But I will tell you, especially if you have a large project like a tumbler, if this first row is not in a straight line, the, the rest of your tumbler is not going to look um, very symmetrical or lined up. And when you want nice lines in your finished product, you will be able to see easily if you don't have that. So, okay, when I do a scatter method, you can see in my other scatter video that I put, um, I kind of paint on some glue because I don't know exactly where I'm going to put each one of those stones. Here, I know exactly where I'm putting these stones. So I like to put just a little dot of glue. It does not have to be much, but it helps so you don't see the glue in between the stones. So, all right, I'm going to put that stone about where I want it. I'm going to flip my picker over and use the metal part to kind of push it up between the two in the first row. So I'm going to push it up towards them and then I'm going to push it down into my glue just so it seats a little better. So here's my next stone. Theoretically this should butt up right to that first one I just placed. So I'm going to push it up into the stones above it. I see it's right next to my first stone that I had just placed and then I tap it into my glue. So that one is not in the right spot. There we go. Let's move it a little bit. All right. I'm going to move to the next one. And you just start to get the feel for where these go. And your glue is wet for a little while. So if you do a row, sometimes what I do is I will place five or ten kind of in a row about where I want them. And then I'll flip my picker around and I will take those ten that I just placed and make sure they're seated where I want them. So I'm going to go through, oop, <laughs> get back there. I'm going to go through kind of fast here. I'm not using my metal part of my picker. I'm just going to quick throw these about where they go. Now I'm going to come back to my row. Okay, they're all going to squish up next to their buddies. 
and now I'm going to tap them down into their glue just so they have a really good adhesion to the glue. And that will make your cups go a little faster or when you have a large um, a large project to do. I usually, like I said, I'll count to 10, throw on 10, I don't want to say sloppy, but somewhat sloppily. And then after 10 are on there, come on back, push them up into their buddies in the row before, and then tap them all down so they're nice and snug with the glue. All right, that is our second row. All right, as you can see, all my stones are wrong side up, so I'm looking at the flat bottom of them. So I'm just going to shake my tray, and that is a really easy way to get numerous stones back the right way to make them easy to pick. I know I'm going to need more, so you can sprinkle more on there, as many as you want on your tray. Give it a good shake, and look at that. Many of them are facing up the right way. So it makes it a little easy for you in a very short amount of time to just get those in a better position. All right, so we are going to drop our little dollops of glue on here and get ready for our row three. All right, so same thing. I'm just cozying these up to the row above them, making sure it is exactly between those two stones between them. I'm just placing these quickly about where I want them for now, but I know that my glue is still wet on this row, so I'm gonna quick get this row done. Look how fast this one is going. This is real time. And now I'm going to go back with the little metal part of my picker to scoot them in place. As you can see with this guy here, I put maybe a tiny bit too much glue, so it is squishing out a little bit. That is something you could fix if you wanted to now, although this glue does dry clear, so it's not the end of the world if you do have a little bit of glue. But this is a good reason that we put down the little drop of glue versus kind of painting the whole bottom of this that you can hide your adhesive or hide your glue fairly well. See, I just squished that one down and some glue popped out of the bottom. So I'm just gonna kind of scrape that because that one's especially on the end. That one's gonna be much more noticeable than one just in the middle. So I'm just gonna squish these guys down so they have good contact with the metal underneath. And that is our row three. All right, everybody, we keep doing this from one row to the next. We just do the exact same thing. So I'm going to speed this up a little bit for the process. And then when um, we're done with almost all the rows, we will come back and discuss a little more.
Okay, let's get this last row going here. Same thing, we are going to just do our little dots of glue. Pick up these little guys, put them where we think we want them about. One thing we don't want to do too much of, we don't want to push the stones around a ton with our wax, like I kind of was doing there. If it's just a little bit here or there, it's fine. But if you really want to seat those up into the ones above it, you don't want to get in the habit of using your wax tip to be pushing stuff around. Um, sometimes you need a little more um, oomph or elbow grease to do it, and you will find yourself breaking your wax tip. Also, we don't want glue on our wax tip. We want it to be nice and waxy, so it's just the right amount of sticky to pick up stones. And... Uh, it's easy to get glue or adhesive on the wax tip. So just try to get in the habit of flipping your little picker around and using the metal part for this. So I'm just doing some little kind of last minute moving here. That last guy of the row before keeps wanting to move a little bit. It's hard to seat that last row in there when they kind of want to keep moving around. But that is basically it. You keep doing this around your project, your tumbler, whatever you're doing until you get down to the bottom. Now, I do have a little row here on the bottom of exposed uh, metal of my passport, but another stone would not fit. We definitely don't want that hanging off the edge like that. If you think this is a bit of an unfinished look, especially with a larger stone like this, there are other options. Uh, for instance, uh, if you give me a second here, I have some of the same color stone, but different sizes. So depending on what your project looks like, the shape, uh, where you're ending. So for instance, if this is a tumbler, if you maybe wanted the very top row up kind of where your lips go when you drink, and the very bottom row, or the very bottom row, and or, um, if you wanted it to, um, I don't know, look a little different, you could use, so these are smaller stones. I think it said that was four millimeter, but it was hard, hard to remember. Yep, four, okay. So we'll take some of these guys. I'm not actually going to do it, but I'm just gonna show you an option that you could do. So here are fours we could fill in. Again, those are hanging off the edge too, so that's not something I'm going to do or adhere to. But you could throw those in just to make it look a little more filled in. And that actually, if I had just like a millimeter more space on there, that actually would look very nice. You could do this on the bottom too. So if you had a cup that you wanted to just kind of finish off the top and bottom a little better, you could do that. Um, we'll circle back at the end to the the one cup that I had showed earlier, the, the more white crystal colored one. And those are much smaller stones. So um, I, don't, I didn't think that it needed to kind of be uh, finished uh, with a smaller stone in between, but it's ab absolutely an option. All right, so it is winter in Wisconsin right now, so I apologize, but I'm not actually going outside to show you this. So through my patio door is the best you get with the sunlight. But as you can see, it sparkles beautifully, and uh, the honeycomb method, it's just, it's so perfect looking with all the lines that it creates. And it just makes that little, that little piece inside of us that likes those very pleasant, satisfying things to look at, makes that happy. All right, so just kind of circling back, this is now dry. I usually want these to sit and, I always use the word cure, I'm not sure that that's the right word, but, but fully dry and harden uh, your glue. I personally, before I would ever sell or send out a product, I make sure it is uh, a good seven days before I do it. Some people say less, but um, you know, what's a few more days? 
So just to make sure. So technically this is water resistant. So if you do end up putting it in a cup, this is something that um, they can still get wet. I would not soak it. I would not scrub it much. Um, although at the end of this, and I can't even find really a great spot to to show you, but sometimes, um, well, always what I do is when I'm done with a project like this, I take a soft bristled toothbrush and I just go around and just kind of lightly scrub the top of this. As you're using your wax tool, inevitably some of the wax is going to kind of stay deposited on the top of some of these. And it's, here I just actually made one, I'm not sure if I can catch that off of the... off of the light here. But that little white part is just the wax that I kind of rubbed on here. But as you can see, it doesn't allow it to sparkle when it has that wax on it. So yes, eventually, if this were a cup, for instance, that would eventually get wiped off just with regular everyday use. But if this is something that you want to look pretty fantastic right away, if you're going to sell it or promote it, um, you want all of that wax off of here. So really, it just takes, you can take like a microfiber towel or a little cloth towel thing. Um, I use the toothbrush and it just helps get any of that kind of extra residue off of there. So let's go to, back to this guy. This was the 14 ounce cup that I have also made. And, you know, we were talking about maybe filling in little or smaller stones in between here to make this look not so blunt. But if you use smaller stones anyway, it looks very finished on the end. And it does not look like there needs to be, I don't think, anything additional. The only, the only way that I would really consider something like that is, so you start on the top here on your rim. I always start down a little bit just so it doesn't go right up to the top and and you work your way down with rows and this is a cup that obviously that you work one row to the next to the next and you just work your way down because all of those have to butt up again to the row above it so as you're coming down here if I did I think this was actually pretty perfect at the bottom this came down it ended just before my cup started to curve down to the flat bottom and that was perfect for me but if for some reason there was maybe too much for my liking at the very bottom if so this is the bottom of my cup so here's the top it's nice against the the very top but this side not so much if I wanted that that's maybe a spot that you could just add a few smaller stones. Again, they're going to look like they're spaced out more because they're not going to butt up to each other this way and touch each other like all of these are because they are smaller. But it does add somewhat of a finished look if you add those smaller ones in if you think it needs it. However, I even if the bottom looked like this and was this far away from the bottom and I it was just a little too small or too narrow to add another row I probably would just leave it again nobody knows what this was supposed to have looked like they know what it looks like now and I think either way is beautiful so thank you for watching everybody I appreciate it if you have any questions throw those in the comments I will link everything that I am able to in the description and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for joining us at 4th and Birch. I hope to see you next time.